Okay guys, today I'm working on the old 69 Ford axle bearing. Completely shot. I'm going to try a trick. I've never done this before, but this is something my uh, either my grandpa or, or an old other old gentleman told me to do. Um, and I just want to see if it works. Or, well, I'm sure it works. But sometimes, if you've never done something, you don't have the quite technique, you know, or, or, the, or the finesse to make it work the way these old timers did when they used to do this stuff all the time. So anyway, what this trick is, I was told how to remove bearings without a press, without a puller. And what I was told to do, was take either a sledgehammer or a large chunk of steel, which I have a piece of railroad iron, and support your bearing race. Take another good hammer, good heavy hammer, and wrap that brace on the opposite side hard. And what I was told, and, and it makes sense, is they are hard enough that when you hit them, they don't have room to move and you know you all studied science probably in high school and uh, you might remember the saying objects in motion tend to stay in motion objects at rest tend to stay at rest well this race doesn't want to move because it is supported by this block which doesn't want to move because it's supported by this table which doesn't want to move because it's sitting on the ground and if all goes well, we will have a nice little crack across here. And that will separate the outer race. And we throw all the bearings off and we do the same thing to the inner race. And uh, so, you know, I just, I'm just curious. I want to see if I can do this. Uh, as always, safety equipment, people. And that goes for everybody standing beside you. Uh, when you're striking hardened objects with other hardened objects, pieces fly. They will go into your body. And when they come off, they are hot. And it hurts like hell. So anyway, I'm going to pause the video. Let's see if I can get this done. Okay, well, I took about six good hits. Took uh, three to, to break it across the top. Then I rotated it over and... Uh, you know, it took several more. Honestly, I wasn't hitting it real hard because I was trying to avoid damaging this. That's not a real big hammer that I'm using. But as you can see, it did take the outer race off. Uh, I'm going to reset everything, get it positioned right, see if I can crack the inner race here. Um, <laughs> pieces are everywhere, so, you know, have a good magnet or have a backstop or something for these pieces. Um, and... and you know, I'll, like I said, I've got a magnet. I'll pick it up. There's one big piece right there that came off. And, uh, you know, on the plus side, hey, I got some ammo for the slingshot. And I'm sure I'll find more when I run the big salvage magnet around. But uh, I'll pause the video again. I'm going to see if I can chunk this one off now. Well, I realized this retainer ring right here that presses on behind your bearing is actually a larger diameter than the inner race. It was holding me up off of the uh, chunk of railroad iron. So I uh, went and got a sharper chisel. This one's real blunt. I mean, real blunt. And uh, as you can see, I just cut a little groove in it and that expanded it enough. It took, I don't know, five, six hits. That expanded it enough that then it came loose. Now I can just slide it off and slide this off get all this crud off of here that was the uh, retainers for the balls and then I'll start to work on that race again okay guys well on this one you can see got a chunk gone there as soon as it focuses got a chunk gone there I don't know Let's see if I can get in here see that crack it is cracked now it took 16 hits. One of them was a glancing blow. 
Uh, so it took 17 really good hits, and it's not off yet. Um, the first two or three hits, I used the big blunt chisel. Um, then I went just straight to the hammer. Um, and the other thing, since since railroad track, you can see it's crowned. All of my force was right here. It wasn't spread across the bearing. If you had a flat uh, piece of steel or whatever, where the force would be spread across the bearing, it might not have taken so much to crack it. Um, and I do want to share one other thing. Uh, I was talking to my uncle, see if he had a hydraulic press to put the bearing back on. And uh, unfortunately he doesn't, I'm gonna have to run to town. But he did tell me if I wanted to go to the trouble uh, or if you're in a bind and you don't have access to a press, what you can do, uh, an old trick, is take two by sixes. Take two two by sixes. Put one on one side, one on the other. Make sure they're about a foot long or, you know, a good amount long, longer than your shaft. You bolt them every about eight inches, whatever. Bolt them up and down through here and tighten those bolts down so that it squeezes here. Now you put your, you put your bearing on first. Put your retainer on, put your bearing on first. And then bolt them on there so that they squeeze right here and uh, push up against that bearing. And then you lift the whole arrangement vertically and you find some concrete. Sorry, my chef's trying to run away from me. And you, uh, where this wood sticks off the end, you lift this vertical and you find some concrete or you find a good heavy table like this and you just raise and drop raise and drop raise and drop and it's a long process but it will push that bearing on there then you take the board off you put the retainer the little retainer that I showed you was pressed on you put that on there you do the same thing you press the retainer on and the reason you do it in two steps is it takes less force to put the bearing on and the retainer separately than the retainer and the bearing together and uh, you know if if you had a piece of pipe, you know, if you had a piece of pipe that would fit around the shaft and it was long enough, you know, you could uh, hammer on that pipe. The thing is, though, you gotta, you gotta remember, you got studs. You got studs out here. You gotta protect. Um, you don't want to be pushing on one side of this flange because you'll bend the flange and then your wheel's gonna, eh, you know, you're gonna cause some problems. So, um, you know, just. Trying to show you guys some old school methods. Um, while the people that know how to do them are still around to teach us. So, thanks for watching guys.